Hi everyone, welcome back to our Indian Geography class. In the previous sessions, we had studied about the features of Himalayas and its significance. Today, we will be going to discuss about the second physiographic division of India, the Northern Plain or the North Indian Plain. First of all, let's study about the features of North Indian Plain. This image of India shows its physiographic divisions. Blue color represents the northern mountain. Green shade represents the northern plain. To the south of the North Indian plain lies the peninsular plateau. Both the sides of the peninsular plateau is shaded with pink color which depicts the coastal plain. And on the seas we have islands. As far as the North Indian plain is concerned, we can say that it lies between Himalayas and the peninsular plateau. It is a classical example of a gradational plane. What is an aggradational plane? Aggradation is the process that refers to the raise in the level of land that occurs due to the deposition of sediment. So, aggradational plane means the plane or land which is formed due to the deposition of sediments. Here in the case of North Indian plain, this sediment deposition is carried out by the three Himalayan river systems, Indus, Ganges and the Brahmaputra. North Indian plain is formed by the depositional activity of Indus, Ganges and Brahmaputra along with their tributaries. So it is otherwise known as Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra plain. Its total length is about 3,200 km from the mouth of Indus to the mouth of Ganga. The Indian sector alone accounts for 2,400 km in length. Its average width varies from 150 to 300 km. It is widest in the west where it stretches for about 500 km. Its width decreases towards east. Its area is 7.8 lakh square kilometer. North Indian Plain is the largest alluvial tract of the world and it is the largest agricultural tract in India. It is known as the backbone of Indian agriculture. You know that agriculture is the backbone of Indian economy. So just think about the role of North Indian Plain in the growth of Indian economy. The Ganga Brahmaputra Delta is known as the food bowl of India. It is the most fertile and productive area of India and so it produces food grains like rice, wheat, pulses, etc. Punjab, a part of this North Indian plain is known as the granary of India. Now let's have a look into the divisions of the North Indian plain. This one is the diagrammatic representation of the cross-section of North Indian Plain. On the basis of variation in relief features, North Indian Plain or the Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra Plain is divided into four. The Babar, Charai, Bangar and the Khadar. North Indian Plain is divided into four. Babar, Charai, Bangar and Khadar. Here you can see the northern mountain system, the Himalayas. The part of the northern plain which lies very close to the Himalayas or the Shivaliks is the Babar. Further south of the Babar lies the Terai tract. The other two divisions, Khadar and Bangar, are going to be explained by taking the example of River Ganga. This is River Ganga. The floodplain along the river banks is the Khadar. The area far away from the floodplains is the Bhangar. Okay, now let's study it one by one in detail. First one is the Babar. It lies to the south of the Shivalik. It is the northernmost stretch of the Indo-Gangetic plain. It is a narrow belt of about 8 to 16 km wide running in an east-west direction along the foothills of the Shivaliks. It extends from River Indus to Tista. It consists of gravels and boulders deposited by the Himalayan rivers. 
Rivers descending from the Himalayas deposit their load along the foothills in the form of alluvial fans. These alluvial fans, often pebbles, cobbles and boulders, have merged together to build up the Babar belt. The porosity of Babar is the most unique feature. Its porosity is due to the deposition of huge number of pebbles and rock debris across the alluvial fan. And it has a thickness of about more than 5 km. The streams disappear once they reach the Babar region. Due to the porous nature of this area, the streams disappear or sink once they reach the Babar region and flow underground. And so, this region is known as the zone of disappearance of rivers. The zone of disappearance of rivers. This area is marked by the dry river courses except in the rainy season. It is not suitable for, the area is not suitable for agriculture. Only big trees with large roots thrive in this belt. The next one is the Terai region. It lies to the south of Babar. It runs parallel to the Babar. Its width ranges from 15 to 30 km. Terai are the marshy tracks consists of the fine sediments. It is composed of comparatively finer alluvium and is covered by forest. It is known as the zone of reappearance of rivers. The underground streams of the Babar re-emerge on the surface and give birth to the marshy areas. The zone of excessive dampness, thick forest, rich wildlife and malarial climate. This thickly forested region provides shelter to a variety of wildlife. Jim Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand and the Kasiranga National Park in Assam lie in Terai region. Most of the Terai land, especially in Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, has been turned into agricultural land which gives food crops of sugarcane, rice and wheat. The third division of the North Indian Plain is the Khadar or the Bedlands. The Khadar is composed of newer alluvium and forms the floodplains along the river banks. These are the newer alluvium tracks along the courses of rivers and it is made up of new alluvium and fine granules. They are enriched by fresh silt every year. The soil is frequently renewed due to frequent flooding. This makes them most fertile soils of Ganges and so they are suitable for extensive cultivation. They are sandy clays and loams, drier and more leached and less calcareous. It doesn't contain calcareous deposits of calcium. In Punjab, the Khadar rich floodplains are locally known as Betlands or Beds. Deltaic Plains this is the extension of Khadar land. It consists of old mud, new mud and marsh. The uplands in the delta regions are called chas, while the marshy areas are called bills. Uplands are known as chas and the marshy areas are known as bills in the delta regions. Then the fourth major classification of the North Indian plain is the Bhanga. It is the largest part of the northern plain. The Bhangar is the older alluvium along the riverbeds forming terraces higher than the floodplain. It is made up of alluvium. The soil in this region is not renewed frequently. It is old soil, old alluvial soil and it is not very fertile. The terraces are often impregnated with calcareous concretions known as Kangar. It contains the calcareous deposits, the beds of lime nodules locally known as Kangar. The soil is of a more clay composition and is generally dark colored. The Barinth Plains in the Deltaic region of Bengal and the Bhur formations in the Middle Ganga and Emuna Do are regional variations of Bhangar. These Bhur formations have been formed due to the accumulation of wind-blown sands during the whole dry months of the year. <coughs> Bhangar contains the fossils of animals like rhinoceros, hippopotamus, elephants, etc. The next one is Ray or Kalar. 
Ray or color are the part of the Bhangar tract. In the relatively drier areas, Bhangar exhibits small tracts of saline and alkaline efflor efflorescence and they are known as ray or color. It comprises the saline efflorescence of drier areas in Haryana. Ray areas have spread in recent times with the increase in irrigation. That's all for now. In the next video, we will look at the regional divisions of the Northern Plain. Thank you and have a nice day.